Hi everyone, I'm Sanjana, J&J's Fireside Chat Coordinator, and I'm here with Janine for another Fireside Chat. Janine, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so please tell us about your educational and professional backgrounds and the path that you took to get to where you are today. Sure. So um, I went to the University of Delaware, which I selected for a couple of reasons, one of which was it had a strong communications pro program, um, which is what I majored in. And another is I really liked the way the, um, the winter breaks were set up. And I'll explain why that was important to my career path later. Um, so I graduated with a bachelor's in communications with a minor in English. Um, and, uh, and following my graduation, I went and worked in DC um, for a PR firm, which was a progressive PR firm. And I worked on the Hill, on Capitol Hill, and worked on a number of political causes and nonprofits, a lot of campaigns. Uh, following that, I moved back up to New Jersey, which is where I'm from and wanted to stay. And um, I, I worked uh, in um, a small, it, for, worked for LexisNexis on, with a media firm for a small portion of time. And then I moved over to the public sector where I worked in state government for a number of years. I started out as a spokesperson for the Civil Service Commission, which governs the state workforce in New Jersey, and moved throughout, um, you know, a, in, a, in a career in the public sector. Sector, and, and ultimately, my last position there was Chief of Staff at the Board of Public Utilities, which is the regulatory agency that governs all utilities in New Jersey. So, following my time in the state, I decided I wanted to get more of a mixture in the private sector. So, I moved to Burson Marsteller, which is a global public relations firm where I specialized in public affairs and crisis communications. So I was able to sort of leverage my background in working in politics in DC and in state government in New Jersey into this, into this role where I led director of, uh, of public affairs and communications within that agency and work with a number of clients. And then um, I had an opportunity from, from, from a former colleague at the Board of Public Utilities who was working in a startup um, in an energy software startup and wanted me to come over as uh, the VP of marketing and communications there. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I've never done that before, but I did it anyways, because I think if things kind of scare you a little bit, you should do them because that means the universe is telling you you need different experience. So I did, I went over um, and I, and I went for, I worked for that software startup for in, in Philadelphia for four years. I started in marketing communications and then um, became the chief of staff to that organization as well, where I really worked on overall organizational design. Um, following that, I decided I wanted to relocate back to New Jersey and um, had an opportunity to work for Honeywell. I started in communications at Honeywell, um, and I've been with the company for over six years now. Um, started in communications um, for one part of the business, then was promoted into a larger role, leading communications for the whole business for performance materials and technologies. And then about five months ago, I moved over to one of our businesses called Advanced Materials, and um, that is headquarters in, headquartered in Morris Plains, New Jersey. And I lead customer marketing for that business. And that takes us to today. Wow, that's amazing. Sounds like such an interesting career. And it definitely seems like you are very engaged in everything that you were doing at every step of the way. So that's really awesome too. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so my next question for you is, did you have any significant extracurricular experiences in high school and or college that you feel really helped you later on in your career? Absolutely, so there are two that I'll highlight. So the first thing I'll highlight is, is high school and the second thing I'll highlight is what I did in college. So in high school, um, I, you know, and, and for those watching, it was probably a little before your time, but back, back in the day, we weren't as good about talking about issues that matter, or things that were important in the community. It was just something that we kind of brushed under the rug maybe a little bit. And when I was in high school, my best friend and I decided that our town needed to pay more attention to issues that were important. Um, so we created a club called Prevent. And the goal of Prevent was to bring issues that were really important to our small town. So to, to bring awareness on HIV and AIDS, which at that time was, you know, was, was not talked about all that often, but to bring awareness on, you know, prevention and, and causes and what you could do, um, you know, that was, that was one of the topics, domestic violence, you know, date, date, dating violence and so forth. So we brought these really, you know, teen, teen depression, we brought these really important issues into our school. We had featured speakers that we brought in and um, when, that was when I started getting into communications because I learned that the best way to bring attention to these issues was to also work with the media. 
So I started working with, you know, major media publications like the Star Ledger, which is our statewide paper. And I learned that, you know, you could actually get a lot of attention on critical issues by engaging with the media. And I thought, you know, I could maybe for a living. And, um, and that kind of set me off on a career path in communications and marketing to realize that I could make a difference and, and really influence behavior and, and, and so forth through, um, through the media. So that was one really formative experience. And I think the thing, the takeaway that there that I learned too was you can, if you don't, if you see a need not being met, you can decide you will meet that need. So you can, you can get the support you need from your community, from your school. Um, more often than not, you will, you will be able to find somebody, a faculty supporter, somebody who was going to champion you and, and let you kind of uh, take the reins and, it was a really good experience, got a lot of great support from our community and from our school. But I think if it hadn't been for the fact that we just decided that we could do it, um, you know, no one told us to do this. This was not something that that uh, that sort of came out of a direction from anybody. We just, we decided to do it. And and um, and that kind of sets the tone for how I approach my career in general. So I kind of forge my own path. And then the second thing that I'll highlight circles back to the, what I said earlier about the, about the winter breaks that Delaware has. So, um, in my winter break of uh, my last year, my senior year of college, I volunteered for a presidential campaign. I we felt very strongly about the candidate. I really wanted to get involved. And I went up to New Hampshire, supposed to be for a couple of weeks. I was gonna go up to New Hampshire and be the volunteer there. So I went up and because I had this press experience because I'd done a number of internships in college I, and, and, and I just had, had built up my portfolio there, they asked me if I would assist the press shop while I was in New Hampshire. And there's a primary going on, it was a big deal. I was like, okay, sure, no problem. So I, I decided to do it. And keep in mind, at this point, I'm just a volunteer. I'm literally sleeping in a basement, in a cold basement with other interns um, because that's how, that's where they housed interns that, that and, and volunteers that come up from, for, for, for these campaigns. So I'm in a basement, you know, I'm driving to the office every day, getting up at six o'clock in the morning. Cause back then you didn't just Google a bunch of news stories. You had to get physical newspapers, clip them, paste them into paper, make photocopies and then fax them, fax them, not email, fax to uh, headquarters. So I used to get up at six o'clock in the morning, do that, and then assist the press shop in the rest of the day. And then um, the, the actual campaign came into town. So there are a lot of activities not in town, but in this case, the actual campaign came in town and they said, would you be the press secretary's assistant while they're in town? So you would move to the hotel, you would go with the campaign and you'll assist the national press secretary and the press corps and whatever it is they need to do over the next week. I was like, oh, okay. I've never done that before, but sure. Yeah, I'll do it. So I did. And at the end of that week, he offered me a job right then. He offered me a job to leave on the plane the next day and join the campaign. And I was like, well, I have a semester left of school. So can I do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Because I don't have class those days. And he said, no, it would be a full-time job. So I contacted Delaware and, and I told them I had this opportunity I only had like 12 credits left that I needed to get. I said, I have this opportunity. I really want to do it. But obviously I also really want to graduate. And, and, and I worked it out with them and they were like, okay, we're going to give you for doing this. You can get credits. You'll get a couple of college credits for actually doing this. If you do these weekly reports and essays on the campaign experience, you'll get some college credit. And then after the campaign's over, you can still walk with your class, but you'll take a couple of classes over the summer and finish up. It's like, all right, let's do it. So I did, packed my bags, went on the road for another couple of months with this national uh, campaign uh, where I got a tremendous amount of experience in you know, the national press corps and logistics and just figuring out how to get stuff done in a way that I probably would never have learned organically. It's something that you can learn when you, when you have these sort of tremendous experiences. So um, very formative. It actually is what led to my first job, which was working for that press secretary in his PR firm in DC that I mentioned earlier. Wow. That's so, so cool. Like even with the high school experience you mentioned and starting your own club, like that's amazing. And then of course, getting to work on the campaign sounds so fantastic. I'm glad yeah. you have those experiences. Yes. All right, so my last question for you is, what advice would you give to young people who will be embarking on their professional lives soon? So first I would say, don't be afraid to just try things. You know, 
take internships, do informational interviews. If somebody has a job that looks cool, reach out to them on LinkedIn and, and ask them if they could chat with you about it because people love to mentor other people. So if you have an opportunity to engage with someone and, and find out more about their career path, then, then go for it. Um, take internships, seek those out, even if they're short term, get, get yourself some real life experience. And, and I guess the biggest thing, and I think you can tell from kind of how I've navigated my career is just don't be afraid to take a leap. Get, take a leap of faith in yourself. Believe that you can do more than you know, because the secret is nobody really knows what they're doing. We're all just faking it until we make it. So just get out there, stretch your wings and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to take a leap of faith in myself. The worst thing that can happen is that you, 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 you don't succeed at something, but that's just another way of learning. So every, every time you don't succeed, you're learning how to do it differently the next time. So just you know, have faith in yourself, you would be surprised what you can accomplish. And you'd be surprised, you know, the kind of faith people will put in you to be able to stretch yourself further than you thought you could stretch. So just go for it. Absolutely. You hit on some amazing points. Thank you for sharing. And overall, this session was so amazing. I loved it a lot. So thanks again for being here. Well, thanks for having me and good luck to everyone out there. Feel free to reach out to me directly if you're interested in anything that I talked about today.